Welcome everybody to the Monday, March 14th meeting of the Conway Select Board. And at 6.30 will be a joint meeting with the Conway Finance Committee. Monday, March 14th, 314 being International Pi Day for those mathematically inclined. Um, let's call the, call the meeting to order. And uh, the first item on the agenda, approve the minutes of March 7th. You look good to me. Yep. Uh, I make you. a motion to approve. I second. Aye. And let's see. Pardon me. Just getting the amounts for the warrants um so there's three warrants for tonight the first is an accounts payable warrant for five hundred and twenty four thousand eight hundred and fifty eight dollars and twenty nine cents next is a payroll warrant for a hundred and nine thousand nine hundred and three dollars and eighty two cents and a payroll deduction warrant for $27,764.38. They're on the table here, awaiting our signature once we've finished reviewing them. But um, the motion to approve? Uh, I'd make that motion, yeah. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Meetings attended by select board members. Um, and Erica? Uh, none for me. Bob? Nope. Right. Okay, I had um, well, we, we had a uh, union negotiating committee meeting where we we've, we've settled our our claims with our union. So we are now officially, um, well, once once the frontier committee approves it, but we are in the Conway Grammar School committee approves it, but we are tentatively settled with all four of our professional unions and it was only congratulations yes yes and so the um the amounts were after the 14th meeting was the same as they were after the third meeting but, um but we got there so hooray hooray and um and what else did we do that's good enough. Yeah. Um, public comments, no. Old business, no. New business. Is, some, are, are, is Samantha going to be on? Or? She's on. Ah. Hi, Hello. I'm here. Hi, Samantha. Welcome to the Conway Select Board Monday Night Extravaganza. Thank you so much for having me. Um, <laughs> I'm actually executive. What's I'm that? <laughs> um, but my name is Sam Stalins and I'm from the Children's Advocacy Center. Um, does anyone have you heard of the Children's Advocacy Center or are familiar with with kind of what we do? If not, I'm happy to give you a little bit of background. Yeah, I think we learned about it last year when we were going to do the flag raising last year that was COVID canceled. So, yes, um, yeah. But 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 why don't you explain it for the um, people? There are people that listen to this. Why don't you explain it? So I guess it's a good thing. If you haven't heard from us, it means you haven't needed our services. Yeah. Um, our um, advocacy center that's set up to streamline the response of any allegation of child sexual abuse. Um, but we also work with kids who have been in um, pretty serious physical abuse cases, um, have witnessed a crime or in severe neglect cases as well. Um, so our larger team, which consists of um, our local law enforcement prosecutors from our DA's office, uh, victim advocates, mental health professionals, um, and sometimes DCF, so the Department of Children and Families, if they're involved. Everyone comes to the center at one time. Um, the child who has made the allegations comes to the center as well um, and goes through what's called a forensic or fact-finding interview. Um, it's all evidence-based. This model has been researched um, and it's, it's very trauma-informed. You know, the whole idea is, is to get the child to a very child-focused, warm center um, so that they only have to tell their story one time because um, we don't want you know, kids to have to tell this over and over and over again and, and kind of be re-traumatized by that. 
Um, so following the visit to uh, the center, we coordinate mental health services, um, medical exams if needed, and then you know pretty much anything a family might need to get through that time. We recognize it's a really um, disruptive time in, in people's life and probably one of the most serious crises in a, in a family's you know, experience. Um, so we do some basic need type stuff, um, help with, with housing, you know, if that's uh, protection orders, anything that that, that family might need. Um, so I have a case manager, Abby Bliss. She's also from Conway. Um, we have an on-site mental health clinician, um, Karina Fisk, and we are actually getting a um, pediatric sexual assault nurse on um, DPH, Department of Public Health, has funded a part-time position for us so that we can offer on-site mental, uh, sorry, on-site medical exams. Um, so that's a little bit about our center. We are in Greenfield over by the fairgrounds. Um, we share the driveway with the Green River Cemetery, so you'll probably see that sign first. Um, but we're the big stone building at the top of the hill, very private. Um, it's, it's absolutely lovely inside. Um, yeah, so we do a lot of prevention work. One of the things that we do um, in April in honor of Child Abuse Awareness Month is a flag raising ceremony. Um, and so that we had tried to get one going last year, but you know, COVID, everything's, you know, COVID, pre-COVID this, pre-COVID that. Um, so what we do is it's a very, it's kind of a small ceremony, but very meaningful. Um, it's both a celebration of childhood and how special childhood is. And um, it's also a time to remember those kids who have been um, experienced abuse. Um, so we raise a flag in honor of those kids, but also as a celebration of childhood and a celebration of those kids who, you know, don't have to have those experiences um, and celebrating the resiliency of those kids who do. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty, it's a flag. Um, and there are six kind of silhouette outlines. Um, five of them are red and one is blue. Um, and that stands for one in six. So one in six children nationally uh, will experience some form of abuse before their 18th birthday. Um, so that is just, you know, a little bit about the flag. Um, we do. Flag? Did... Yep, that's it. Great. Uh, um, we, we got this on our packet, but I, but it wasn't labeled. So it's this, I was assuming it was. Thanks. Yep. Beautiful. Cool. Um, so our staff would be here. Um, we'd raise the flag on the pole. Uh, sometimes it's up to the town really how long you want to fly it. Some like Greenfield flies out the whole month of April. Um, we do one in Athol and they just kind of raise it for the ceremony and then put it back down. It's really up to you know the town's preference. Um, but we have uh, like the district attorney will come, Dave Sullivan will come. Um, I'm going to invite some representatives. They usually try to come to our flag raising. So Natalie Blay and Adam Hines have historically really been supportive of the CAC. Um, and then, you know, and anyone in town. Um, Fire department, police department, and then um, I'll say a little something. The district attorney might say a little something, and then any of you are welcome to, you know, say something if you wish. If not, then it's kind of a quick little flag raising, and we'll have some some information about the children's advocacy center and uh, services that we offer, and um, you know, be there to answer any questions as well. That was great. I mean, I would I would propose that we fly it for the rest of April. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, come to all this trouble. Do you have a date for it yet? Um, so we were looking, I think we had talked to Veronique about maybe April 8th, which is a Friday. But we're flexible. Um, we have our Greenfield and Athol flag raising on the 1st. So that's the only day that would not work. Eight is fine. Eight works for me. Yeah. All right. We, and what, ta what time? Yeah, we, so I was going to ask you guys. So we typically do them. Um, we, our Greenfield one is mid-morning and then, um, I'm sorry, Athol is mid-morning, Greenfield is mid-afternoon. So do you have a sense of when might be best for people to get some people there? It'll be warmer at one or two o'clock than it will be at 10 or 11, but sure. if it's outside, but, um, but. I like, one sounds good. That sounds great. One o'clock. One? Sure. So do we need up to make a resolution or say any kind of vote or anything? We have the power. <laughs> we have the power to, to do this. People. What's that? That I'm talking to the right people. There you go. There you go. There you go. And once, but I, I liked your, I, I like the uh, Conway centric focus of your organization in terms of staffing right now. So um, once again, proving my, 
point that Conway lifts above its weight in saving the world in general. So exactly. yeah, two out of four of our, our staff, That's, half of yeah. our staff, born yeah. and raised in Conway. So we really thought it would be special to kind of bring it back home. Um, Conway's a to grow up, and, you know, not everybody gets to have that experience as a kid. So we really want to also just celebrate having a great childhood in, in Conway and going through the school systems and landing where I am now. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. Wonderful. Thanks. Absolutely. We'll see. We'll see you Friday. The, we'll see you Friday the eighth. Yay! Looking forward to it. Thank you so right. much. Thank, Thank you, you, Sam. Bye. See ya. See ya. Children's Advocacy Center. Um, so ARPA is also on the agenda. I don't know that we have anything. Oh, well, we spent money on it last week when we were here. And what, what, go ahead, Veronique has some updates. Go ahead. Well, it was just, I did send out today a, to the group that in talking with some people, I believe if the select board decides they wish to move forward with, um, which I, I'm pretty sure that you all have said clearly you do with helping businesses that were adversely affected. If the if you also wish to go through with the revenue replacement, if you can't do the whole thing on revenue replacement, you may have to set aside certain monies and we put it under a different category for helping the affected businesses. So I just wanted to bring that up for a later discussion of you know what the, the amounts might be. In other words, if you do, if you vote to spend all of the ARPA funds on the revenue replacement end of things, it doesn't fit under using it for helping affected businesses, which I know is something the select board is interested in doing. So I didn't want the select board to, um, you know, tie up something and, and not have that um, option for the future. Is there an estimate of how much it would be? No, I don't think we've gotten there yet with how much. That's really um, set aside. highly discretionary. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh huh. Yeah. And, and it's, um, yeah, so there's a, there, there, you know, my, 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 my thing is that we were sort of headed down the path of spending it on a couple of big ticket items, this building that we're in right now for the lift and the public safety building for offices and well and all kinds of stuff. And those are two big uh, unknowns and well, this is slightly, we know that the, a previous estimate for the lift was, I believe, 90. Um, but we know they're big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so um, I, I would be reluctant to spend money on a very discretionary thing and then not be able to attend to the things yeah. that are important to the town um, and the town government. And that, I mean, that, that, that to me is... We, we have these things that we've been talking about for years and it's, you know, if, if we don't do them with this money, when are they ever going to get done? Um, yeah. And we did spend money on having the license fees. Right. Right. Um, but I mean, still, I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to, to help when we can and where we can, but until we get some numbers from the building committee and um uh, you know i think maybe it would be better for us to just sort of hold up we can send a letter you know if we're going to send something out we should send something out with the advisory that it's going to be a few months before we're um you know doing any financial awards based on this just because that's my biggest worry about it is that it's so discretionary you know that once you start down that path, um, well, I mean, who I, do you help and who do you not? You know, help Deerfield's for? doing the whole thing on a soccer field. Uh huh. The whole thing. Um, and uh, so I, I, we've already done. We were already done good with it. You know, getting, getting all the the payroll stuff automated. Um, getting you know taking take we're reducing the assessment on the school budget. 
and um, the, well. the well, which was just a down payment on the well. Um, but, you know, that's, yeah. these are things that are decidedly unglamorous, unsexy, <clears throat> but responsible. And of course, you don't have to obligate the funds until 2024. So yeah. you don't have to spend them until 2026. So there's certainly time to deliberate and decide. Have we had a lot of specific requests yes. for the money? Yes. Yeah. I, I can guarantee you there's more requests for funds to go out than there are funds. No, no, come in. for this <laughs> issue. For, for, oh, oh. For, 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 oh, no. For making business local. We have not we have not put out any kind of letter or anything yet uh -huh. to find out what it might be. The, the yeah. working group is talking first about maybe setting aside a limit, you know, asking the select board if there was some amount, a pot of money that the select board wished to set aside from that and go that way, um, or or to. That would be the way to go. Yeah. So. But um, I'm not. I, I feel like I don't have enough information to do that yet. It's fine. Yeah, I agree. And uh, when I'm open to getting more information so that we can put that into motion. And I think that's going to happen in the due course of events because people are motivated and they're working on it. Um, and we got the right people doing it, which is a really good thing. And uh, yeah, so. Um, what else was there with ARPA? All right, so um, we can move down on the list, take care of a few other things. I'll talk about the mail, the national grid. Notice of possible er application of herbicide on transmission maintenance and transmission maintenance activities. So I don't know if you, if you all saw this, if you took a look at the map that they sent to us about what they're planning, where they're planning to do it at, that's the old railroad bed along the Deerfield River. There's no way that that's where they're planning to do it. That, I mean, I, did, I don't know. Take a look. Look where it crosses over the Deerfield River versus where Bardwell's Ferry Bridge is. It crosses over above above the, the current railroad bridge. So that is the that is the train line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and at the very top is where it stops being it, this is now this was the former train line with the high bridge over the South River that hasn't existed for a hundred years. So to me, I there's no no, there is, is there must be that transmission is isn't there is there a transmission line above the Conway station? I guess there is. All right, so that yeah, it's the gigantic transmission line that that, that goes across Bardwell Ferry. It does go across Bardwell's Ferry. Um, yeah, above that, the parking area, above the parking area, and then it goes um, Bill, Billy. Um, it goes across his land. It goes across the hay farmer's land. So that there's like really, that's really not on anybody's, that doesn't come in contact with anybody's house. It's all out in the middle of nowhere in the fields. Well, so if they're going to spray, I guess they're going to spray where they're not going to be killing so people. So this is the path that they're going to be spraying? Yeah. It's. 1627 in the Met right of way number 1627. Mm -hmm. On the bottom, I think they're only talking about tree pruning and tree removals. Am I reading that wrong? The bottom of the map? National Grid intends to perform selective site pruning. Well, it says they focus on it, but it also says the paragraph above it, it says, and the application of federally approved and state registered oh, yeah. herbicides to control targeted vegetation where site conditions allow. 
I was just looking at the bottom of the map. You're right. Yep. And for a lot of these crews, it's just, you know, spraying is the cheapest option in a lot of in a lot of circumstances. So did we send them a letter? No, um, we haven't sent this is just we just got this. Um, what, should we ask them to come in and explain, put them through the same process as our Eversource friends? National Grid and Eversource are the same company. Yeah, well, they're divisions of the same yeah. company. Um, Yeah, I mean, you know what? It's probably a good idea. We should have them. We should send a letter. We'll send a letter to them asking them to come in and explain what they're doing. And town administrator update. Sure. Okay, so um, I have spoken um, with Kathy Lamas, who's our um, Conway Mall Mall Maven, who's in, sort of the head of the volunteers there. Um, and on the advice of both Maya Insurance and our town council, um, I'm going to be asking the volunteers to sign a, a hold harmless waiver. Oh gosh. It's it's on their advice, on both their advice. Oh, come on. And Kathy's talked to them already and said that um, the problem is the volunteers fit the definition of an employee. They're in that funny gray zone. Um, so I that's know, like I, I hate to do it as that's well. That's like right at the top of the list on how to get volunteers to not want to volunteer anymore. Well, I did speak with them ahead of time. Okay. And it was. It so was can you explain what this is? What? It, yeah, it's just a form basically in the unfortunate event that, well, here, I'll read what it says on here. Maya's told me that it is our recommendation that the town ask volunteers to sign a hold harmless agreement to the effect that the town is not to be held liable for injuries to the volunteers. And the problem is volunteers are considered employees under general liability, but they're not covered under the umbrella from what I understand. So it, it and as a matter of fact, let me ask you something. asked me if I could forward this form so she can send it to all of her towns. When I when I did this years ago, we, we never even thought about that, never crossed our minds. You have a volunteer that actually trips and falls and breaks an ankle. Mm -hmm. Would you actually enforce this against them? What it's saying is that we they would not be able to hold us liable well anybody can file a lawsuit you have to you have to enforce it then you have to you have to go to court and enforce the agreement i can just tell you the town council and our insurance company right that didn't you didn't answer my question whether i would enforce it yeah yeah it would so, be so, so there's we would have the, a hold harmless agreement and yet a volunteer gets hurt on our premises well, if a volunteer gets hurt, I'm assuming we do our best to take care of them. This is this is not about whether or not we would try to take care of somebody. Um, it's more about protecting the town from a million dollar lawsuit that we couldn't pay out because we are not protected. Under usually that. it's making any type of claim at all, medical expenses, anything. Yeah, this, this is, it, it, it is about being injured. Yes, you're right. That's what it is. How, how about other volunteers? Uh, uh, people that coach soccer games. Exactly. Uh, That's where uh, it's headed. Uh, uh, or, you know, anything. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. About every committee person. member of every committee. Well, depending on what they're doing. You know. Going in and out of buildings, yeah. doors. They're dangerous. Steps, stairs, yep. lawsuits, humanity. Well, we don't make them sign this agreement. I have not, no. No. I think it's mean-spirited. Okay. Is there something special about the mall? I, I think it's because of the location, because of it's you know at the transfer station where there's the possibility of a lot more happening. Um, 
And every time you're in there, you bump into somebody or something. <laughs> and the stairs are kind of sketchy. I can and certainly revisit this if that is your. I mean, I get, you know, that's what they, that's what they do. They, they say, get these types of things um, signed. But, you know, to me, it says we don't value your presence enough to take care of you. It doesn't say this is just to keep it so that you don't sue us. We're still going to take care of you. To me, it says quite the opposite. Um, and so maybe the specific language in there just prevents them only saying, only making, only filing a lawsuit. But the mm -hmm. general boilerplate language that's in all of those says any medical bills, okay. anything that we're saying that you're on your own. I'm, I'm happy to review it. I'm just doing my best to try to protect the town. Yes. Yes. I, um, the guy. I just worry about it setting a precedent that then we're going to start asking. I mean, you know, now, now we've made the Festival of the Hills a town activity again. All of the Festival of the Hills. No, there are, there are parts 501c3. They're separate from the town now. Yeah, they are. Oh, I thought we brought them back in and made them a town committee. No, no, it's, um, no, but that, I, I they certainly didn't, they ended up, they ended up they not ended wanting, doing that? they okay. ended up not wanting to. Okay. Um, but the, you know, there, there's wisdom in what you're saying. And it, like that in, in like bigger cities, that's what you would do, but um, I am more than happy to review it all and come back with more specifics for you about how many people it would affect and what the effect would be. Do you know if the people who are currently working on the mall, what their opinion is? Well, that's why I asked ahead of time. They're also nice. They're also good. Well, they they said they wouldn't have any problem. That was my understanding in signing it. But they understood. So. And again, as I said, if the director of the solid waste district just asked me for this form today to forward it, so she could. We were more about our town council if they're asking us to do it. Yes, well, they, I know that you said they are. So if you if you ask them like that, of course they're always going to say to do something like that, because theoretically it makes you harder to sue. But the reality is, you would actually then have to enforce that agreement if they still try to sue. If they have no and, and people without any other recourse, that's what they have to do. And then, um, I, I, you know, I, I, when push comes to shove, it was it's, it was like this in the school committee when um, the, the family that missed qualifying for free and reduced lunches by a dollar a year or something like that, then had a two or three thousand dollar balance that they couldn't pay at school lunch thing for their kid at the end of the thing. And you had a choice, you know, do you sue them or not? Mm. And who really has the brass tacks you to would, just like, yeah, yeah who, who can do that? But you had the choice in that case. And you won't have the choice without this. Yeah, but. But it's fine. I will look into it more. I will come back and give you more specifics about it. Yeah, I mean, if we could, maybe you could make it narrower. Sure. And does our does our insurance have like like with homeowners, you have um, if someone's hurt, you have like a five thousand dollar medical expense portion of your homeowners policy in Massachusetts that is like paid without regard to fault or like whatever it's just if somebody makes a claim yeah i'd have to delve into that more where, like fifteen thousand is what's sticking but it doesn't make your rates go up by whatever mm -hmm. so it, it's so that would be like mm -hmm. i mean that's my mm -hmm. thing people people get hurt like medical bills are, this is the united states medical bills are a huge deal always and um I, I totally understand why you feel that way. And that's certainly why I, I asked ahead of time what the reaction might be before I brought it forward um, with, with the folks at the Conway Mall. Because, you know, but um, I will say town council was fairly mm. promoting this. Yeah, sure. 
and it was recommended by the insurance. So, but I will come back to you. Okay. It, 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 we all love the Conway Ball. I mean, I wouldn't want to do things to hurt the Absolutely hurt not. The ball. Absolutely not. Um, right. So, so on, on, did you want to go ahead and start? I can well, I don't, that later. I don't know who's. We have Alan and Sophia. That on top of Alan's head there. It is. Don't 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 uh, sue I, me. Alan. Don't sue me for it if I scare <laughs> no, you. <right? laughs> It'd be pretty scary, you know. But uh, Rihanna's here. I, I don't know. Is Roy here? Not yet. Um, no. Let no. me uh, let me uh, bug him. I like doing that. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in other news related to the transfer station, unfortunately, the amount of money that we're getting back for recycling keeps going down. Um, actually, I think I brought the chart with me. Starting in July of last year, um, we were getting $21.07. It went up and then it's back down together, down again. Now we're just getting $5.61 per ton of recyclables. Now that's still really good news because we're not paying the $95 a ton that's in the contract. But this is the reason why I wanted to make sure that we kept those funds in the transfer station budget because if the markets continue to go down and we end up paying, you know. Um, and the other end of the so is the transfer station profitable again? I mean, are we making enough off of recycling that we're not going to? Oh no. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, nowhere near. I'm afraid. Yeah. And the bad news is, um, I got another update from Jan that you know our trash goes to Community Eco Power, and they have filed bankruptcy. She's looking into um, other other alternatives. How much they owe us? It, yeah, but is warning me that um, it, and that the town said it may be going up to about $100 a ton to get rid of our trash. So that is increased, going to increase the transfer station budget as well. Um, so I'll, I'll bring that forth yeah. um, probably next week because there's several budgets that have had to have little tweaks in them, little adjustments as money, you know, as you get better estimates. So I'm um, sorry about the bad news there. Um, and then I just want to let you know that the Public Buildings Committee had its first meeting last Thursday, and that they're currently discussing the design plans for creating office space for the fire, police, and ambulance. Um, and plans are moving forward with siting and drilling the new wells. Hopefully, that will be done fairly quickly. Now, did the amount that we paid? Do you know that the, that fifteen thousand? Now, it's been explained to me that most likely that doesn't cover the cost of a well. It just covers the cost of the drilling and the set, whatever. But that the actual there's, there's, there's equipment needs above and beyond that, most likely. Not that I know of. I mean, there's the, the, the estimate had the drilling itself and then the casing that has to be put in. But, but the problem is, you don't know how deep the well is going to be until you drill it. Or how much casing. Or how much casing. And it's, it's a, you know, you get a per foot cost. So that's why you really can't get anything. So that's why when Ron was sharing his information, he was saying, okay, well, this is how much they're going to cost per foot to drill and per foot for casing for the casing. So I don't think, of course, you then you're going to have to tap in. You've got the plumbing costs. You've got the being able to get the pipe into the building. That's separate from the drilling. So, and cheaply met, I think, will be helping us figure that out, the cost for that. Does that include the pump? The estimate? I don't believe so. I don't so, so that would be another. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, there are other costs that will come in for sure. And that um, maybe you should have, you know, that ARPA, with ARPA, we should have paid for the other known costs that were associated with it. it should have been. Well, I think when you did it, you said that it, you recognized it was an estimate and they right. could come back for more. So I'm not concerned that you couldn't just have them come back with the actual cost and say, yeah, you can always throw it again. 
So, Alan, is that Roy who's on there now? Uh, I hope. I never recognize phone numbers. Oh, no, no, he's got it. That's, that's um, the town. There's too many of them. Uh, I just sent, left him a voicemail message, and a voicemail message and a text. Hold on. Did you get a chance to see the spreadsheet that I did for each of the on the omnibus? I just took the operating and the transportation and did it out for like it's not in this, it's on the big spreadsheet that I got. Um, oh, goodness. I did send it to you. You sent it. Yeah. I was I, I was looking at it on my phone and it was impossible to see. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Is that this one? Yes. Yes. So you have to find the tab. It's three hundred. Yeah. Three Oops. I'm nervous about doing something on my computer. I don't know. I don't know. It's all left Well, I've, I've, I've nudged Roy again. I haven't heard from him. I think he's home. So what else, what else can we do? Can we start without a quorum? We're not voting on anything. Yeah, yeah. we've started in the past. Yeah. Just information. Yeah, I say uh, please start. Let's because there's a lot All to right. cover. You know, thanks, Phil, for doing this. All right. So um, we're going we're gonna to do an initial the, the initial of the school budgets tonight. Um, I guess for the past few years, I've been presenting the school budgets in my capacity as member of the Frontier School Committee, Frontier Budget Committee, Union 38 Budget Committee, and Conway Grammar School School Committee. Um, and uh, we'll start with the Frontier Budget because it's already been, um, the numbers are official and have been voted on by and approved by the school committee, the regional school committee. So they are what they are. The Grammar School um, has been read by and uh, discussed and it will be it, it is up for a vote to be adopted on thursday i believe thursday thursday at five or thursday at six six um so we'll do the frontier first the frontier um the total budget increase for frontier is 3.64 percent or four hundred and thirty thousand dollars and 39 cents it's a total operating budget of 13 million three hundred thousand six hundred and thirty nine. Um, but of that uh, over a million of that is from school choice and revolving funds so that the amount from the general fund but it, the, uh, the general fund budget is twelve million two hundred and thirty seven thousand. And. Okay. 
the the to, the yeah. So the total budget is yeah four hundred four hundred thousand. 430,000 from last year. So 3.64%. The big number that everybody cares about is what the assessment is. And um, for Conway, the frontier, the increase in the frontier assessment is 2.64% or $40,000 from last year, which is really good for us. Um, if, if you look, it's Waitley that gets hurt the worst. Um, they have a 14% increase. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Somebody say good, <laughs> um, but they, they actually all the way to the left. Bottom row. Yeah, I mean they actually it, it it's they actually had a modest increase in students, and when you have all when you have the least amount, just getting I think they had fourteen more students this year than they did last year, so that wow. explains it. That explains their increase. The the. Um, Frontier did have a drop in enrollment, unanticipated, of um, a total of 60, 60. and wow. um, most, almost all of which were from Deerfield, and they they left for homeschooling during the pandemic. And there's optimism that most will be returning now that um, they're back to normal. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> See, yeah. Would Frontier be making them up with school choice kids if, if they can? They did have more school choice applicants this year than ever before, and there was wow. one. There was one grade that they got concerned and they stopped accepting them. Uh -huh. It was one of the middle school grades, I think. But I'm not sure which I don't I forget which one. Well, school choice gets bad if the numbers are bad. So. And see, one of the things that they wanted to do though, because of the way that the, they, they have a, a surge from uh, I guess now that the kids are in eighth grade, but they have a one class surge and it's presenting where it's 40 kids more than it was the year before, or the year after. And so it's presenting all kinds of staffing problems and they wanted to address it with a, a new English department position and that was one of the ones that didn't that that we end, they, they, they ended up being okay with having a retirement in another department being you know that I guess it's math um, the math department had a retirement instead of them getting a new math position that retired position is going to go to the English department so that was too many they had too many math teachers yeah um, never can have too many math teachers yeah all they need to know is today is international pie day <laughs> well i have a question does the uh, yeah. budget take into account the uh, has the frontier regional school system also had to renegotiate union contracts for the upcoming fiscal year and if so does um, it reflect those actually, uh, actually alan um we just announced earlier this past week we set we settled with the last two of our four unions so we are now all settled with and are about to sign three-year contracts with all four of our unions and okay. um the the, it, the number came in at three to three percent increase for the first year two percent for the three percent for some um two percent for others in the first year and three and two percent for everybody the second and two percent for everybody the third year so okay. we, we think we did really well on that. That was what we budgeted for, and it's what all the towns could bear. And okay. we gave we gave in on some other goodies, but nothing that kept us up at night. Yeah, understood. So does the draft budget for twenty fiscal year twenty three reflect those uh, negotiate new, new negotiated contracts? It, contract? does. it, it does. does. Yeah. Oh, all right. Very good. Yeah. It actually matches the placeholder that we had for it. So. Wow. Um, all right. And there he is. Hi, Roy. Right. So, did, um,
Hello, Roy. Yeah, the, the, the other thing is that our, our cost share, our, our percentage, but the cost share did go up a little bit. Um, it went up from 15 point something to 16 point something. And um, because of uh, the, the, that reduction in 60 kids from Frontier, we our our cost our our our, our uh, we had to pay more central office expenses as well. Mm -hmm. um, so is that why Deerfield's increase was so small because of those sixty kids? Yeah, and so and they're having a real hard time with Deerfield because Deerfield lost significant student population at Frontier, and yet their assessment is still going up. Um, and. They, they thought that that was. But if all those kids come back, this will go up more. Correct. Hmm. Correct. Um, so the. And the, 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 um, that the required contribution, the four town required contribution, that's that, uh, the EQ. What EQM, whatever that the, the EQP, EQ, yeah, the, the EQV, where they they count the total income of all taxpayers in your zip code, and they compare it with the other three towns and how it went up or down. Um, and we actually did okay with that this time. That that's another reason why Waitley's went up because Waitley had the thing where two very wealthy brand new homes were huge new brand like very expensive homes came on their their thing yeah. uh, and Sunderland did too Sunderland had a new apartment complex that came online or something so those towns had some growth but we thought we thought 2.664 for for Conway is pretty good the transportation expense portion of that is just 26,000 um, yeah. Yeah. So our total assessment for Frontier's budget this year is one million five hundred fifty-eight thousand eight hundred thirty-two. So that's that should be it should go down okay. Uh, yeah. One the, one of the things though that we did that that Frontier always does, and they don't get any credit for this, and they're, as far as I know, we're the only school that does this. Their Frontier gets E and D, um, that has an e, which is the R equivalent of free cash, and um, and they, they, they you're, you can't you can't you can't get more than five percent of your total budget as E and D. Um, but what Frontier always does is they return half of it to the towns, and they don't they don't do this in any public set. They don't do this at town meeting. They don't announce it. They just send the they just send the money back. Um, and when what you'll you'll see when the tech school comes in that they have E and D. They they get their full five percent in the budget every year. And you'll see when I ask because I've asked them this every year. Uh, they they wouldn't think about returning it to the towns to lower their assessments. They thought it was a ridiculous idea. Um, so how does it how does it get treated then? It's uh, so it goes to the following year's budget because of the uh, an applied. Is that is that way, Phil? Is that it just goes works? back to the, it just goes it gets sent to the town's general fund. Okay, all right. The, okay, the four, the four towns general fund get a check. So every year the uh, Frontier Regional Schools operating uh, budget checking account starts with a quote unquote a zero dollar balance, theoretically. Right. I thought they kept half. Uh, half we spend. H half Frontier spends, and and half. Oh, they, they, don't, they don't. And half half the E and D they return to the towns. All right. Uh, One of the things that people talk about is the high number of buses that appear to be traveling empty on all the bus routes. Yeah. And it, it's great that you're saying our transportation costs are less than they might be, but. Is there no way the schools can 
an, an, do that or? an intractable, unsolvable problem. It is? Yes, yes. And we're required so to run those buses. This empty. is correct. That it is a state law that you have to have uh, transportation available for every student that lives in your and it has that's not theoretically available. That's available every day, twice a day. And so it doesn't the state, you know, and we say. All year long, there's been two kids at the most on that bus. Right. There, there might be 45 kids on that route, but um, it, most of the kids are going through K through six and never getting on a bus. Um, and they say, tough, too bad. That's not how it works. You have to have the, and it, you know, we, we, they, they actually have a waiver process where you can seek, Desi, you can seek a waiver. As far as anybody knows, they've never granted a waiver. <laughs> um, and um, um, our neighboring district um, in Shelburne Falls, they they tried really hard to get a waiver because they they're broke. Um, they're broke. I'm they're sure broke. it's the same problem they're, in all towns, right? Yeah. But and, and what's particularly galling is just the, these gigantic diesels emitting monstrosities rolling right. down the road empty yeah. always yeah. always you can't always get parents to commit that their kid isn't going to take the and bus or that the parent, parents don't have the legal right to even waive that and it's um wow and yeah it, it, it is completely it, it, it's it doesn't make sense doesn't phil i have sense. a question regarding the uh, transportation does the state, yes. does DESE still require every year for uh, Frontier to put the school busing contract out to bid for, for both Conway and for the uh, Frontier Regionals in Union 38? Yeah, we're on a five year cycle with that. Oh, five years. Yeah. All right. And we, we were not able, one of the things that happened with the last bid, which really, so in, in years, so there was, there's a big countywide bid. Um, that Tech and Mohawk and um, Greenfield and, and others all participate in. But, in, and in the past, we've always put our contract out in that process, but because we were always able to say no and go with our own process if we felt that wasn't the, because Gribco doesn't bid on the county contracts because they don't have the buses or the manpower or the desire to do it. Yep. And um, but they just want to do frontier and 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 the four towns. And Gribco is still yeah, about half of what what tech and it, per mile per kid. And so it, and, and once again, I, I found out that the upcoming bidding process that the, 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 the people, the, the actual people that are running that process is the tech school because they're the biggest consumer of it in miles and sure. um, they they want all the all the schools to that participate to guarantee that they're going to use it that they they don't they feel it's unfair to the bidders to make a bid without knowing that as like an advisory bid or whatever yeah. so so we're not going to be able to participate in that again no so really yeah although we when the text people come here i intend to inquire severely about this topic we won't um, allow gripco to bid no gripco will be able to bid on our own but we won't be able to participate in the countywide bid that uh because ends up bought and the yeah. first student whatever the company from worcester that comes out mm -hmm. first union or whatever they're called um and they we're not going to be able to participate in that because we're not going to be able to guarantee that we'll go with the low bidder of that process because that won't include Gribco. So, uh, but so so if Gribco's bid was high, we couldn't get to use the other bid. Well, Gribco's bid did sneak up a little bit last time, and they know they, they can read. Not right. What the other bus companies are charging, um, and yeah, um, is there still a shortage of uh, bus drivers? Yes, chronically, permanently. Well, I make a motion, and uh, that all select board members have to drive the bus at least one <laughs> route a week. Used to, 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> it was just the 1950s that our superintendent used to have to drive the bus too. I've seen Lenny Gripko drive a bus a couple. Oh, yeah. Times. He says he does it. He he drives every route once a year. I think he's been doing it more often over the last year. Mike can remember who Lenny was. I mean, I think he drove the their route when they were kids. Yeah. It's really hard to find drivers. I mean, I, I'm sure the reason the budget they're, they're kept up, they have, they have to pay by, they have to pay at least at least eighteen dollars an hour. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. The other thing about Frontier that I did want to talk about that we did have um, moving into the district um, a, a special needs um, a special needs kid with uh, out of who's let a learning plan call for an out of district placement residential placement and the way that those that that works is just so unfair to small rural towns so that that was a hundred and ninety thousand dollar hit wow. totally unexpected which town is that um not conway but All right. it's yeah there there was a request that we not even identify the towns publicly because it's too easy for it's fam, family shouldn't be stigmatized. Sure. Um, so so but it's a frontier regional school, not not a student. Yeah. From the Correct. Yeah. Correct. But it's still the, so the frontier. Budget. Well, legally, there's nothing we can do about it. They have the right to do that. They, no. so, choose. they so choose. That's it. And it, so this what, has always been talked about as a law that needs to get changed and and what we've done a lot of as frontier is bring as many of these services in-house as we possibly can we offer like so many more services than all of our neighboring districts in this regard and we have a, the lowest number of kids sent out for placements that as a result so we yeah. think it and it makes good sense for the kids for the families and for the taxpayer as well so um, well being that we're uh I guess we're probably neck and neck with the Northern Berkshires, but we're, we're the most rural county in the Commonwealth. And, uh, you know, as a percentage of the budget for transportation, we're probably in, in number of student miles, if you will, logged per year, academic year, I'm sure we're like well above the state average. It's probably amazing. I mean, I know Frontier, Franklin, Franklin Technical High School has the most student miles logged in busing per year of any uh, technical school in the entire Commonwealth. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Yeah, the other the other but thing the change in the law would be easy though. I mean, if they if the law were changed so the state picked up out of district place, right? Uh, it, it you know it would not be a complicated right. law to write. And not only that, but there's like a majority of the Confederate states actually work that way, and mm. that's what they, like we're actually behind mm. the way we do financing of schools in this Commonwealth is. Yeah, it's been stuck in so many. Well, areas. we uh, at Conway Grammar School lost their uh, level one status. I mean, their title one status because I guess a, a wealthy family moved in, and because of the formula, we got bumped right. down. Exactly. So we might we might make uh, fifty thousand more in uh, property taxes, but we lost over a hundred thousand dollars in uh, right. in in uh, school funding as a result. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Desi formula is what it is. It's it's crazy. And the other thing about so there 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 is a capital request from Frontier as well. If you saw that, um, and the the it's the the language actually needs in, in the proposed article would be modified because we would not be voting. To raise and appropriate seventy-five thousand, we would be voting to raise and appropriate thirteen thousand eight hundred and sixty-seven fifty as our share of the total cost of seventy-five thousand. All right. So, um, and that's to replace the walk-in cooler uh, on the ground floor for the uh, of the kitchen, the main kitchen uh, uh, at the the middle of the building, and got three estimates from that two of the contractors felt that the concrete pad needed to get has been so degraded that it should be replaced one of the contractors did not however so they're getting more opinions but if it does not if the concrete pad does not need to be replaced 
then it would be 60,000 instead of 75,000. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But it is something that is, has been flagged for a long time and it's in bad shape. And I actually saw it, it was disgusting. Or flagged by the Deerfield Board of Health or? Yeah, everybody from the fire, from the fire commissioner to the board of health, to the rest, to food, food inspecting. Uh, so yeah, um, but yeah. It, it's 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 way way past its life expectancy date. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so this will be a warrant article. It'll be a separate a separate, a separate, separate warrant, warrant article. Yeah. For thirteen thousand for that. Those okay. warrant articles don't uh, have a have a history for some reason of getting of getting voted down sometimes. So we'll we'll see. Uh, um, I, I well, we could pay for it with our money. Well, yeah, I suppose we could. I suppose we could. So that's that's the frontier budget. Um, we got off lucky. I thought got off good. Yep. And. The Conway Grammar School budget is, um, I think we went over the $2 million threshold this year. So yeah, the, the total budget this year is 2,086,307, an increase of 2.96% or 60,000. Now, it originally would have been an increase of 9.43% or 191,000, um, but we, that, we used ARPA to pay for that significant $118,000 increase to employee separation costs based on sick pay buyback payments. Okay. Have those uh, six employees been replaced already? Um, yeah, be, so... Mm -hmm. two of them were last year so it, it's four two of them were last year but they put the paperwork in too late so it got and four of them were effective this year all right but yeah basically all the teachers all the ones that i knew and were friends with and that my kid they do they're all now i go in there and i confuse the teachers with the kids gosh <laughs> I guess the sixth grade, the sixth grade teacher at Conway Grammar School was a student of Rick Gifford. <laughs> yes, yes, and I, you know, so I, to me, I, I miss that man. Still get to see yeah. him. I miss him. Sure. And uh, I have a question. The uh, so, how many of those six who've been hired are, are going to take health insurance? Is that a curiosity? Because yeah, we health, already know. We already know. We already know the answer to that, and there, it was. Uh, was it all it, six? You know the answer. Do you remember? But that's an annual cost, right? But I always ask this because you know, it gives you an idea of how competitive are the benefits that the teachers receive, or health insurance wise. I mean. I think that the uh, health insurance package at Conway Grammar School office is kind of like, as compared to other towns in uh, Franklin County is, is like middle of the pack, right? Yeah, but um, our school has, our schools have these reputations of being really good to work in. That, yeah. That, and they, Conway, Conway Grammar School, when people get hired, they never leave. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't and so you know that and, and the way that it works where the the budget one of the reasons that the that, that the budget ended up looking better than it would have otherwise is because the new hires cost significantly less than the 20-year grizzled veterans that we are family plans that's that that's one of it but on on the pay scale they just when you start out yeah, when yeah, when you're just you're right. you know it, it's so much less the yeah. Step two is the difference between step two or step one and two that we hire at, and step seventeen that they go off on is um, three times as much. I think so. Wow. wow. Yeah. And um, 
Oh, yeah, I have a question, yeah. Phil. Uh, last year, we hired a, uh, created a, a special position. The, um, it was, I guess, to work with the school adjustment counselor at the Con yeah. Conway School, you know, helping students who had been remotely learning, you know, transition. Yeah. Back to, um, how was is, how is that position working out? They love that position. They think it's really giving that school a big advantage. Um, the other three schools are very jealous, apparently that we have that and they don't hmm. and that it's a I thought it was a wise move i mean can, yeah can it's a noticeable the paper difference that. is that now a permanent position they um it's funded for this year for sure uh it it was not intended i believe That's to, be, thought, to yeah. be permanent but nobody thought that the bid pandemic would be stretching into year three either so yeah, yeah. um no, it was a uh, good move. I thought we did. Now I was kind of shocked that Deerfield didn't approve it. But you know, my thought is, and that could be one of the reasons why I didn't have a big drop in uh, homeschooling for, for so many students in Conway is that as a result of that. I, I think that there's something to that. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, hopefully we don't have too many more teachers being driven to retirement. I know so many schools around here have had teachers do that. Of course, and they're reflecting a nationwide trend. Yeah. So, good. Thank you. I don't have any further. Roy and Rihanna, have you any further questions or anything, comments, suggestions, anything? Um, no, I have a curiosity to know how many students are in the, uh, on the school. It's just. Conway K through 12. Yeah. Um, I know Conway K through 12 is three, 384. 384, all right. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, what's the current role? I think it's 126 students is what the uh, state uses to calculate the current Conway Grammar School enrollment K through six. That's is that right? That sounds right. It's numbers as of October 1st. Yeah. Um, which, uh, which one of the towns really got hurt by that, that the number on October 1st was so much lower than what it is now. Uh -huh. um, uh, do it. Do we know the uh, number of uh, choice in and choice out? Yeah, choice in is still uh, choice in to Conway Grammar. Grammar, I think, was forty something. Uh -huh. uh, choice out is twenty something. Choice out's twenty. Well, not wow. choice out. That that includes that includes all the charters and right. Right. Oh, that's for the entire town, K through twelve. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if we so uh, we could probably go higher than forty wait, students no, no. in choice hold, in, right? Wait, hold this. One hundred and twenty-six was for grammar school. Yeah. Right. And then correct. That's the, the, so three three eighty four is the K through twelve student population. Right. Okay. So one twenty six is the number enrolled in the grammar school. So that so that the, the uh, that so. The 384 number includes all the kids that don't go to our public schools that still live in our town. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. anyway. But the 40, that's district wide. That's not just the grammar school. 40 some odd in. Um, no, that's just Conway, town of Conway. Oh, that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, no, but yeah. I'm saying, but that's, I'm saying, but it's the grammar school plus frontier. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, but but uh, yes, yes. No, wait, okay. Wait, no, it only. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought it was just for Conway Grammar School, Phil. I, I, we had K through four. Yeah, K through six was forty school choice students from out of district choosing to go in. Right. Yeah. All right. I mean, we we could. Think it's a lot of us probably because of our uh, wings program, or, you know, sped supports. But uh, I mean, is there a decision by the school committee to cap the number ever? I mean. Or not depends on the staffing, right? I mean, it's it's a constant puzzle. I mean, quote unquote, theoretically, it's a revenue gain for the for the grammar school, right? For the uh, wings. Yeah, the, a couple of years ago, I took a really hard look at the wings because um, the, it, it's a substantial amount of staffing and it's a substantial amount of money coming in and out, and I wanted to really get a grasp of that. And uh, we, the town, benefits financially from having that program here substantially mm -hmm. so uh and i i wasn't aware of that but it, it does 
It mm-hmm. does. And, and the kids in our town that use that program really benefit from it being in our town. Yep. Yeah. So the other, the other thing about the grammar school is um, the uh, capital staple. So the grammar school, we're the only of the four schools, we're the only school that has our own grammar school stabilization account. And, um, and I, I don't know if you remember when we set that up, that was, that was set up about six or seven years ago when Jan Warner was the chairperson of the school committee. And uh, the idea was because our boilers at the grammar school are so out of date that they wanted to have them, we wanted to have the money banked if you needed to replace the boilers, which could theoretically happen with little to no warning. And the total amount at that time was 120,000 to replace both boilers, soup to everything if all of it needed to be done. So. That was what that was the goal for the stabilization fund. And um, through the years, most years we've been taking some in and, p- and put putting some in and taking some out. But um, the the balance right now is fifty nine thousand. And that's because last year we took some out. We didn't put any in, or we took three times out what we put in. So I. Um, don't really have an idea as to how much the budget can endure or bear or whether we want to make, uh, you know, I think going up, going from 59 back up to 125 in one fell swoop sounds overly ambitious to me, but, um, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to make some progress getting it back up in that direction. So I don't know how everybody else feels about that or what we don't really know enough to know about our general budget situation yet. We Can they put D and D money in there? Um, no, you can't put the the grammar school does not get its own E and D. That's the frontier. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, the just frontier. frontier. Yeah, the town gets free cash, and that yeah. counts for the grammar school. Yeah, um, but the yeah we. I mean, we're unlikely to require two new boilers at the same time, but they are so they're they're those cast iron 1960 whatever they I mean they're just really uh, and 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 they, they were supposed to be they're, they're supposed to have a 20 year life expectancy and they're on year 30 30 something some yeah. 30 yeah. something yeah. Yeah. I have asked the chief to give us some more updated. <laughs> Since that was what ten years ago, so it was yeah. So I mean, it's just something to keep in mind that we're going to want a more an article to add something back in. And at this point, they don't have any capital requests to come out of that. Although, um, and that's just because they chose not to put one in. They have a lengthy capital list. And to me, the stall dividers. The bathroom stall dividers on those two bathrooms that everybody that goes to town meeting goes into those bathrooms. Those stall dividers are terrible. They've been on the repla- the capital list there for 10 years. The cost is like five grand. And they won't, I can't make a mask for it. Mm. It's still like, I don't know. I don't know. I thought of all the things though that everybody notices, that's the one every year somebody says something to me about. Only due to town meeting. Only a town meeting. Yeah. It's because you're standing out in the hallway. Right. Somebody goes to the bathroom. They're like, what are you doing here? Don't you guys notice? Look how bad this looks. So Frontier's enrollment, Deerfield's enrollment goes up by 60 kids. Yeah, then they're... Will we be getting a new set of these numbers? No, this is the budget. They... Oh. Oh, this is the budget. Frontier budget's been voted and approved. Oh. And I guess um, what they're hoping is that they'll be coming back for next school year. Because this one's in March. We're in March already. It's, yeah. it's just three months left in the school year. 
So, and we do know now from now on that uh, the school year will always be ending earlier than in previous because Juneteenth, the federal holiday Juneteenth that we had to be, if, if school is in session, the cost, the cost of Juneteenth one day of paid, paid for paid off, paid day off for everybody is $40,000. <laughs> um, so we, there, there's a new directive that no matter what, um, no matter what the school has to be, the school can't be in session. So on July 1st. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, the state says July 1st, yeah. but we say June 18th, uh, uh, 18th because because that expense is a uh, we, we don't get reimbursed that expense by the state. And and we either had to budget for it um, and, and assess for it or make sure it doesn't get spent. We can't have a situation where we're not budgeting for it and then still having to spend it. So. Uh, so those snow days, that that there, there's a reason why there's going to be more of a uh, early dismissal, like you know, two hour delay and then early dismissal is going to be if we have to. And then it counts. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and 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 just set set the bag the bag day you know whatever they have assignments bag I forget what they call them bag storm bags or something like that but. Um, but families can rest assured that from now on, there will be no school after June 19th. That's good Thank because the C rates would be so high, we get penalized anyway if a bunch of kids want to show up. No, I mean, I remember really getting messed up when one school year went, there were so many snow days that it went right up until July 1st, it went yeah. up to like yeah. June 30th or something. And that messed our summer plans up. That's, so, that's the advantage of global global warming. We don't have it. <laughs> You might get tornadoes in February, but we won't have the. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So. Um, and, and the budget reflects the uh, newly renegotiated uh, teacher and IA contracts for fiscal year. It's 23 budget, right, Phil, for Conway Grammar as well? Yes. Okay. Well, thank yes. you for. Uh, well, thank you for, for negotiating, putting all those extra hours in. Yeah. Um, Next. Hopefully, we'll in, get three, in three time. years, I, I look forward to three years from now when you'll get to thank someone else for doing that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. well you, you'll, have a, you'll have a track record. Hopefully, you can mentor that person. And, uh, they uh, yeah, I'll mentor him. <laughs> Make a left at the bar instead of the right into the school. Yeah, so. Uh, that's it for the school budgets. We, we, it's a good year for them. ARPA, ARPA yeah. really helped. ARPA really helped us out. Having to go to town meeting with a nine point eight percent budget when and a hundred and twenty thousand dollar line item for retire sick pay buyback. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So on the impact of that would been voted down. Or... Yeah, that's the thing, and it would have been voted down, and then I. We would have had to spend it anyway. Yeah. By law. Yeah. So that would have just been not okay. Yeah. Because um, yeah. we are contractually obligated to spend that. It is in our union contract that we had to spend that money. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's and it, what the good news is it's, we got that changed last cycle so that um, for new hires for the past three years, that sick pay buyback provision is capped at 2,500 at retirement. Okay. So just like normal, every other school in the state. Okay. Um, so, so 17 more years is how much, is how long we have to endure till, till the last person retires out of that. All right. Um, All right. Yep. But that was that was my contribution to the school. That was a major six year. That took that took four three years to do everywhere, hmm. all throughout. Yeah. Our our non union people, our administrative people, everything. So uh, the other thing about it is that we, you know our our superintendent is 
uh, Desi's new statistics, our superintendent is the second lowest paid superintendent in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts out of 351 school districts. He's probably one of the only ones out of a PhD in some and, education in some field, right? And, like there is, that does not have a PhD, right? Um, he, he, I don't even want to tell you how many people in his own building make more than him now. And the, the, um, uh, I, I wonder where we would stand on the revered category uh, like he's, I, I mean, he's universally and and I, I worry I, every time i'm in his office i see like the stacks of letters from uh -huh. the, the headhunters that come in every day for him and i just you know I, i'm just like just open one of them what does it say and it was you know drive an hour each day for three times the money um and i just we're just really lucky you know he he bought a ha bought a house in in deerfield his kids um, his kids are in Frontier and Deerfield Elementary, and um, you know he, he's the best superintendent in all the years that I've been associated with the school, like by far. And we're so lucky to have him. So I just hope, I just hope that uh, you know, to, to me, the, the one thing that we can do because I can't make him take more money, um, but the one thing that we can do is, and I try to do this, I try to reduce the number of meetings that we make them go to. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's why, that's why they're not here. If, 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 if I would have said that we need you here, that he would have come. Yeah. But, uh, Phil, how, yeah. Was, how did we get him for such a small uh, salary, relatively speaking? Um, we got, we got him for, he, he well, he, yeah, he was the principal of, of the of the uh, Frontier High School for five, six years before whatever he. Okay, but I'll we, just... we, we, we have a history of paying of underpaying the superintendent um, it, in terms of what other schools pay, but we, him in particular, he um, does not. Uh, he does not do it for the paycheck. He's truly, he truly does it because he really, really believes in what he's doing. And um, we pay him enough so that he's able to hold his head up and that that's whatever. He, he's, well, his, his wife has a successful business yeah. and the, the um, I know you, just, you know, we've, we've tried to get him to sit down and uh, I, we we try, try to get him to sit down and ask for more, but he's okay. He doesn't want to ask for more. So um, and we're we're just <laughs> yeah. I, I know I know we're we're just really lucky right now. When you just look around, that we've the, the kind of leadership in the school we've never had it, it this good. And 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 he just had to endure three of the worst years imaginable, like the the pandemic for. The, the abuse that he's been catching every day. Oh my gosh. Um, and I com I complain about catching it once a month at these meetings, you know, but wow. Um, and, and, and just all around, all around in this town right now, these are the salad days. This is it. Like, this is as good as it's ever going to get. It's all downhill from here. Yeah. We're, we're never going to. The Conway Grammar School, the Phil, like uh, Principal Gordon is, um, She's not in a the principal's not. Is she in a contract? There's a contract. Yeah, yes, yeah, she's in a contract as well. She's um, uh, she she loves her job. Darius is like, if I ever go, just try to make. If I ever do leave, she's the one that you should ha hire as a superintendent. <laughs> All right, good. So, how about Shelly Parita as the business manager? Does she see, appear to yeah. be? She's been sticking around for the year. We had a lot of turnover in that, that position as business manager. for the Yeah, we did um, do a new contract with her, and we did get, we gave her five years. Um, oh, good. And she asked for it, and and we gave her um, the the same money that uh, her colleagues are getting. We uh, at the we 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 compare. There, there's three districts that that we. Um, that demographically and every every other which way we match up really well with um, Hampshire Regional, Belchertown, and Monument Mountain. 
Uh -huh. That's the one for Williamstown? Yes. Yeah. Those are the three that are, are most comparable to us, uh -huh. to us in every in every which way. And so we th those all paid their business manager twenty thousand dollars a year more than we did. Yeah. So um, we we bumped her up a little bit. Mm. But she's happy too, and she's doing a great job. We're really really lucky to have her. So Good. I would like take claim credit as the person in the hiring committee that hired all those people, except then somebody would point out that I was also the person on the hiring committee that hired all the predecessors that like <laughs> stunk up the joint. So um, uh, no, <laughs> not quite, but uh, you win some and you lose some. So don't brag yeah. on the ones you win because yeah. 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 How about the, the capital budget for Conway Grammar School? I know we have ARPA money to go towards the, uh, is it the well? Are there any other items that uh, are noteworthy in terms of boilers, roofs? Uh, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, they're they're um, they're on. There's two more rooms to get air conditioned, but that that whole school is almost all air conditioned now. And we we were doing it one one mini split per year at a time past four years, um, right. but. There, I think there's two. There's two more rooms. So that the only room that won't be air conditioned is the gym. Okay. Oh. And the what? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the grammar school got a dishwasher. Oh, they got it. Oh no, that's in. So the, that was one of the things on their yeah. ARPA capital wish list. Yes. Yeah. And okay. they want carpeting in a couple of more rooms, and uh, there was another ventilation thing that they wanted. All right. Um. But yeah, they they could have put in a major capital. The school committee urged them to do so. And I think they felt that the, the amount of ARPA money that they were already taking up, they didn't want to feel like hogs at the trough or whatever the phrase is. And they just, um, and they just broke ground on the playground, which they're very grateful to this town as well. But that was what, 300, almost 300 grand. It was 260. Or something yeah. like that. So, yes. so within the past twelve months, the, the school has accounted for, uh, you know, two hundred sixty-nine thousand playground and one hundred and twenty thousand in ARPA funds. And I think they figured that was enough for now. Yep. But, uh, but, but I would, I would like to add something into that the stabilization fund that should be fit for its original intended purpose. You're saying it's formulated, so it's 235,000. Is that, that the ideal level, the, the uh, stabilization fund? No, 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 120. Yeah. No, we, we wanted it at 125,000. Okay. And now it's at 59 yeah. something. All right. So is there going to be a special money warrant item at the uh, town meeting to move more to there's gonna, Yeah, okay. there's going to have to be. All right. Yes. I guess you'll speak to that. Yes, Maybe so that, uh, Principal Gordon at a time meeting yes. something to uh, address people who might have questions on that. All right. Okay. I know at one point a few years back, the uh, stabilization for the grammar school, the fund balance was up, I think, over $200,000, correct? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, i have to go back it, to my notes. You might, you, you probably have a better memory about those things than I do, but I, I, that I would be really surprised at that because uh, I just remember the goal was always 125 and that was. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Phil. I, I have no further and, questions. And, and, I, can, I can go back and look it over in, his, in ancient history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, with that, that's that's it for school budget extravaganza night. Well, thank you. And if, if 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 you have questions or if you have any, you know, you want to come and ask them to put together a capital budget request on Thursday. Okay. I think from the grammar school. Um, Six o'clock on Thursday. I know, it is. I, I know the chair, the chair of the school committee, Elaine Campbell, really wanted them to, but um, we couldn't. They they just. They they like they like the whole kumbaya relationship with the town as it is, and they don't they, they don't want to push their luck. All right. So, 
Understood. Um, well, if you can send uh, the invite to uh, the finance uh, to Roy and Rihanna and to me as well, please. I, I I'll see if sure. I can pop in a little bit this Thursday. All right. Ellen, you should have gotten one already from Donna. Did you? Oh, Donna Hathaway. So who's Don Donna Hathaway's the school secretary? Is that yes. Donna? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, Thank you, Vernon. Do yeah, Donna Hathaway is the administrative person that does. You know, remember the school. The school got the Zoom, Google Meet bombed. That's because they use Google Meet, not Zoom. So, and and as a result, everybody, they don't. We don't just send out the credentials for the thing anymore. Yeah, Donna has to unlock it for everybody individually. So, okay. any invitation to participate in a school meeting now has to go through Donna. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I'll sign up. All right. All righty. So with that, what else? Do we have anything else? I mean, uh, uh, anything else with the finance committee? No, I think I think I said, Roy and Rihanna, have you any further questions or no. anything to ask of, of anyone? I'm fine. I don't have any. Thank you. Thank. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Sure. We'll see you next week, if not yeah. Thursday. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Good night. Yes. Thanks. Bye. See you next week. All righty. I think that's it for us too. Uh, Yep. Any select board member comments, concerns? Did you have? So I had an issue that I really, to some extent, I was thinking of it coming in the mail, but it's also um, we didn't have 48 hours to talk about it. But but we did get a request to see if the select board would support two bills that have to do with the way the DCR manages for us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, so I, so I said that I said that to you and, uh, and Eric and Bernie um, as something that maybe we could talk about. Um, there's, there's two bills. Uh, one of them is uh, H nine twelve, and the other one is H one thousand and two, uh, and they both have to do with. The first one has to do with forest protection, and it's to change the way the state manages forests. So it would make most of the forests owned by the state managed by the DCR into uh, so that you couldn't do any logging in them. Uh, they would be protected. And then and the only forest that wouldn't be would be would be forest lands that are recreational, kind of like Goshen, the park in Goshen, Play, you know, places that are explicitly run for recreation. But other than that, forests like our forest in Conway, um, the state would not come in and log it. So uh, the goal is to is, is to not allow the DCR to support their budget by logging state forests. Uh, and the other one is increased protection of wildlife management areas. I know less about that one. It's a bill supported by Lindsay Sabadosa, who's a rep from one of our neighboring districts, uh, the First Hampshire District. Um, and it, it would, uh, I, I know less about that one, but it's, but it's also protecting uh, these areas that are referred to as, as reserves. And, and, and so we just recently got a letter in the mail from a Conway resident asking if we would, as a select board, if we would write in and say that we support these two bills. So we would write, you know, Natalie and, and write the people, it's at the Environment and National Natural Resources and Agriculture Committee. Uh, the, the, these, these bills um, go through a long process and it's um, it's gone into that committee and they're reviewing it. And we have a couple weeks until we have to have it done. So we have to have a request into them that we support it. So, so I, um, I'm, a, I'm all in, in favor of, of that. I, that. I guess my general request for people that want us as a select board to send letters supporting something is that it's really helpful if they can, if that request comes with a Word document or a PDF that proposed language. The, the proposed language or that you know a, a, a proposed letter just give us something to work with so that we can save time and the, i don't think we need to be complicated it's just okay. an issue of the fact that we support these bills yeah great great I'm, so I'll, I'll make a motion especially the, the logging one i think that it, the, it's so much in in the, tune with what we went through with our town forest yeah, yeah. And right now, just the, the number of logging trucks that are jamming up our roads right now, every day, is cannot believe how many trees are getting pulled out of Conway right now. So I'll make a motion that we 
then the letter of support to the NRIC committee. I second. Yeah, I'm I'm in favor. I vote right, aye. In favor. Aye. Thank you. So, unanimous. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so I'll write that. It, and it won't be long. It'll be very short. Great. Great. And other than that, um, our next meeting will be Monday, March 21st, 6 p.m. Right. And so then, so we can adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye. Favor, aye. Hooray. Hooray. Thank you, Erica.